Hi, Bookish Besties. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Breeds. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you're already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, we are here to talk about whether or not BookTube is dying. <music> So a couple of weeks ago, I watched a video by Allie with Books. This is a video that she had posted earlier in the year and it just showed up on my recommended videos feed about whether or not BookTube is dying. She wanted to address the conversation because she had noticed herself quite a difference in the views that she'd been getting over the recent years, et cetera, in comparison to what she had gotten in previous years. And ever since I watched that video, I haven't really been able to get it out of my head. And so I kind of wanted to just sit here and do one of my chit chatty discussion style videos to see if I could add to the discourse surrounding the topic. Now, I am obviously not an OG booktuber, right? I didn't even know that booktube existed until about 2017. And I watched it for a couple of years before starting my channel in 2019, but I very inconsistently posted until early 2021 when I basically ghosted my channel and didn't officially come back until late 2022. And that is what I consider to be the official start of my channel. So I essentially have only really been a booktuber for two years. So I'm definitely not an OG booktuber. And I definitely don't have the same comparison aspect as some of the OG booktubers do in terms of like views and trends and things of that nature, right? I'm coming at this from a more newish perspective and I can only really talk about my own experiences and what I've noticed. So this is just going to be a very casual chit chatty style video and I'm very interested to hear what your perspective is down below. And honestly, I think I'm gonna need to go ahead and put my coffee down because I think I'm gonna need my hands for talking in this one. All right, so to get started, let's talk the talk, book talk that is. Now, full transparency, I do not utilize TikTok. I don't necessarily have anything against TikTok and I definitely don't have anything against book talk in general. So that's not what this video is. I do feel like it's a catalyst to the discussion that we are having. But in general, I just feel like TikTok encourages doom scrolling and it only exacerbates the decrease in our attention spans, which seems to get less and less and less over time. And additionally, I just don't find the same value in short form content as I do in long form content. But we are currently in the middle of a generation, Gen Z, who who do want that, right? Who do find value in it. So TikTok is definitely a platform that has blown up in recent years and BookTube eventually followed that. And BookTok has definitely overshadowed BookTube, right? You hear a lot of people talk about BookTok or even Bookstagram, but you don't really hear a lot of people talk about BookTube. I really feel like that's always been the case. I really feel like BookTube has always been the redheaded stepchild of the online bookish community. A lot of people, when you say BookTube, they have no idea what you're talking about. They had no idea that there was this niche on YouTube. But when you say BookTok or when you say Bookstagram, people are more familiar with what you are talking about. So automatically BookTube, I feel like has always been below the other social media platforms, but that has certainly been exacerbated with BookTok. So there is a very real concern that BookTok is replacing BookTube. And I feel like that's especially the case because you don't necessarily get the cross advertising with BookTok and BookTube as you do with BookTube and BookTok, right? You see a lot of videos on BookTube about content creators reading viral TikTok books to see if they are worth it and things like that. BookTok is constantly being referenced in the BookTube community, but I don't necessarily think you're seeing book talkers read viral booktube books to see if they're popular or anything like that. So there's definitely an imbalance between the cross advertisement that happens between platforms. You're likely going to hear about book talk on booktube. You're not necessarily going to hear about booktube on book talk. You have this platform that's specializing in short form content. It's definitely appealing to the younger generation. And if we're being completely honest, there is so much content out there that we want to consume that in a lot of ways, we do want a little bit of shorter content just so we can make sure to consume all the content that we want. But the ultimate question I feel becomes, do we we think that book talk is going to completely erase or kill booktube and the short answer to this question in my opinion is no and that's for a lot of reasons first of all i think that there are still a lot of people out there that prefer long form content to short form content such as myself and i do feel like youtube and booktube in general is just simply for the most part a more accessible platform to a wide variety of people and i would like to make the point that booktube has now kind of become an outlet for older creators as well i have definitely seen a growth in older content creators like people such as myself who are are so lovingly called geriatric millennials, or we have even Gen Xers and older generations coming onto this platform to share their love of books, a platform that they have been looking for for a really long time to share their love of books that maybe they've had for their whole lives and are now just discovering this outlet and they can discover this community that they might not have otherwise had. We're now shifting a little bit in terms of the demographics of the people here on BookTube. And I also feel like just in general, BookTube slash YouTube is better overall at creating community and fostering engagement than BookTok TikTok might be. 
be, right? You have the short form platform. It's really all about watch it and be done. So I don't feel like it encourages or allows for the same level of engagement as maybe booktube or YouTube does. As long as you are commenting on these content creators videos and hopefully they are commenting back or at least acknowledging your comment, I do feel like this is a platform that is more conducive to building that sense of community. So for all of these reasons, I really do feel like booktube still has a place. Booktube has always been a very, very niche part of the YouTube community. And with the popularity of BookTok and TikTok, it does seem that we are getting more and more overshadowed, but BookTube definitely still has its place. Now, what about actual content? The content of what we're seeing on BookTube in comparison to BookTok. One comment I saw on that video that I watched from Ali begrudged the repetitiveness of BookTube. They said that they were tired of seeing the same videos over and over again, arguably the OG classic content of BookTube and seeing the same book spoken about over and over and over again. They said that there was a loss of creativity on BookTube that they might be getting over on BookTok. Now, I am not really going to touch upon the fact that these are classic BookTube videos for a reason, but I feel like a lot of people in the BookTube space who create content and watch BookTube content still legitimately enjoy that content. So I'm not really going to talk about that aspect of this comment. I really want to focus more on the whole creativity side of this, because if I'm being completely honest, out of all of the BookTok videos that I have seen that have popped up in other social media and things like that, almost all of them have been very much the same with very much similar concepts like viral books that are worth it, viral books that are not worth it. And if I may say, there is a common criticism that BookTok is consistently only talking about the same 20 books or the same handful of authors. Now, I know that's not 100% true and I'll get into more of that in just a second, but a lot of what I see is the same repetitive content and seeing the same books talked about over and over and over. So I think that BookTok has the same capacity for redundancy and repetitiveness that BookTube does. I do not think that BookTube carries that burden on its own. And in some ways, I actually feel like it's very much exacerbated on BookTube. One of the reasons is because I feel like BookTok has really amplified book trope culture. And we're now seeing books that are written around tropes rather than books that are written that might contain these tropes. So now you're seeing books advertised as grumpy sunshine, forced proximity, one bed type of thing. So you know exactly what you're getting in that book. There's really no room for surprise there, but a lot of people are gravitating towards that because they know they like those tropes. So a lot of authors are like really leaning into that and they're really building their book around those tropes. And so because those tropes are getting more and more popular, those are the tropes that are being pushed on social media and you're seeing those same books, those same tropes over and over and over. So there's not just repetitiveness in the content. There's also a level of repetitiveness in the books that you're seeing published nowadays. But at the same time, it also has a lot to do with the algorithms, right? I don't think any one of us can really claim to understand how a YouTube or a TikTok algorithm works. But I think what it is safe to say is that what is popular is going to get pushed to more people because in theory, those are the books that more people want to read about. They want the new and shiny and that also lends into the consumer that's also a big complaint about book talk and if we're honest book two because of all the halls and things like that the consumerism culture they all kind of go hand in hand right you are going to see the same content and the same books being talked about over and over and over you have the same propensity for repetitiveness on both of these platforms but at the same time if you have been on these platforms for a while and you have a wide array of content creators in your feed you are going to see the variety that you are looking for now I do know that booktube definitely has more work to do in terms of the diversity of the creators that you're seeing on this platform, right? But I do feel that if you try hard enough, you are going to find people who are talking about a diverse array of books. And it's the same thing with book talk. So I don't necessarily feel like the blame for the repetitiveness should just fall on the content creators. I also feel like it's going to fall on the platforms themselves as well as the people who are viewing the content. But then you also have people like me who are not really impressed or interested in content creators who go out of their way to come up with these wild and wacky ideas for videos just because they know that they are going to get likes and views. Are they creative in some ways, yes, they are definitely creative. And if you are just looking for the entertainment factor, sure, go for it. But like I said before, I am here because I want the informative aspect of booktube. So I want all that OG content. I want to see the wrap ups. I want to see the reading blogs. I want to see all of that going on. I come here to learn about books and I come here to hear the people I trust talk about books. So people who go out of their way to make off the wall content, it feels very disingenuous to me. I don't really find that valuable or informative. So it's a lot of back and forth, right? You hear a lot of people saying that booktube is dying because of all of the old overdone content. But then you have other Others saying that it's dying because of the superficial or the disingenuous content or the content that really exacerbates consumer culture, which you also have a lot of on BookTok as well. But yet if we're hearkening back to the fact that we have some older content creators coming on here, we're engaging in these conversations and this discourse about that consumer culture and the book call culture and how we're trying to move away from that. You're getting more and more nuance into the discussions that are happening over here on BookTube because it's not actually the same content over and over and over again. There are plenty of creators on here that are finding ways to make informative, relevant, interesting, and entertaining content. So I definitely think that there are actually a lot of parallels between booktube 
and BookTok. It's just BookTok is a platform that currently is appealing a little bit more to the younger generations. But again, does that mean BookTube is dying? No, I feel like it just means that BookTube is changing. Now, I actually feel like BookTube has grown quite a bit in recent years. I feel like we are seeing a bunch of new creators coming on here every single day to the point where it's probably going to get, if it's not already getting, oversaturated. And that's going to make it harder for individual creators to stand out on a platform that already makes it very difficult for individual creators to stand out. But at the same time, it might make it easier for you to find the creators that you are looking for. Now, let's be very, very real. It is not uncommon for me at all to find somebody who has only recently joined BookTube, maybe only has a handful of videos out there, and they are exponentially larger than I am. And that is primarily because of two reasons. They fit the aesthetic vibe that a lot of people seem to be looking for. And two, they cross post. So a lot of people are coming on here and they have a solid firm understanding of that very curated, clean, bright, white aesthetic that is very popular in terms of like the lifestyle content that is very popular on YouTube and TikTok and things like that. And so it's now being incorporated into the online bookish space. So if you have this grasp of this very aesthetic content, especially like more of the cozy vibes and things like that, I've noticed that that appeals to a lot more people and then let's be real, cross posting. A lot of the articles that you read about how to grow your channel says that you need to be posting on multiple platforms. And in fact, I do see that a lot of people who are growing very quickly on BookTube already have a substantial BookTok following. So they have come here from BookTok. They have that experience already and those followers are coming on here. And of course, I do feel like that's just because TikTok seems to be a platform where it's a lot easier to get your content out there. It's a lot easier for the views and the likes. And so it's easier perhaps to maybe build your following on TikTok than it is on BookTube. And so when you come onto BookTube with that already established following, that makes it easier for you to grow your BookTube channel. So if you can tap into all of these markets, you're going to likely have an easier time, right? That is not something that I personally can do. And it's something that I have accepted, right? I work full time outside of the home. I am in grad school. I have a family to take care of, a home to take care of. I also am very passionate about CrossFit and going to the gym. I am gone from my house about 12 hours a day during the middle of the work week. And I am constantly only getting videos up by the skin of my teeth. It is a miracle that I've been able to maintain a two video a week posting schedule for the past couple of years. So I am not going to be able to do beautiful pictures on Instagram. And I'm certainly not going to be able to try to master TikTok. So I do have to accept that because of my inability and my lack of time and bandwidth to kind of tap both of these markets, that that might mean that my channel won't stand out as somebody else. And again, that's not an indicator of BookTube dying. It's just an indicator of multiple factors that makes it hard to grow a channel. There are so many content creators. There's so much content out there and who the hell knows how the algorithm works. So it's all going in there to make it more difficult to grow on BookTube or YouTube in general on a platform that's already difficult to grow to begin with. And I feel like that kind of goes back to the decrease in views that Ali was talking about because we have this double-edged sword, right? We are seeing this influx of content creators that I do really feel is representative of the fact that BookTube is not dying at all. But at the same time, you might be seeing views go down just because there is so many content creators and there's so much content out there and there's just not enough time in the day. And everybody is just trying to figure out what to watch, when to watch it. So as weird as this sounds, I don't necessarily feel like a lack of views is indicative of BookTube dying, but maybe quite the opposite because BookTube is growing and people are finding more content creators that they resonate with more heavily. I can honestly tell you that the BookTube content creators that I started watching BookTube for, I don't really follow any of them for the most part. Now, some of them have stopped creating content, which is very sad, but for the most part, I just don't relate to them anymore. I have found other content creators, typically smaller content creators that I look forward to watching and I enjoy their content. And I've also built friendships with them. So I also have that community with them. And it's not just me watching a video of a content creator, right? Because that's also not why I'm here. I'm also here to build community. So I do feel like some of the lack of views that are going on could be more representative of this platform growing than it is of BookTube dying. And I will say at the same time, it's not just views, right? It's engagement overall. Now views undoubtedly are probably the most important metric when it comes to BookTube, because that is what's going to influence the algorithm to push your video out to more people, telling the algorithm that people are really liking your video. And so it's going to want to push your video out to more people. Views are definitely also what influences the monetization of channels, right? You only have to have 1000 subscribers in order to get monetized. You also have to have 4,000 hours of view time. And let me tell you, it took me six additional months from the time I hit 1,000 subscribers to actually get monetized because that's how difficult it is to get views. So views are certainly a very, very important metric. But at the same time, I feel like overall engagement is very important as well. So even if you are noticing lower than normal views on your videos, well, that is very disappointing and it could definitely affect the prosperity of your channel. I do think it's possible for you to have lower than normal views and higher than normal engagement. Just as a quick example, one video that I posted a couple of weeks ago only got about 500 views, but it had around 40 comments, which was pretty high for one of my videos. But yet a video that had over twice as many views had half as many comments. So it really just depends
depends on how interactive your videos are, how much they inspire people to comment and post. And I do feel like it goes hand in hand. Like the more people comment on your videos and the more that you interact with them, that also helps the algorithm tell people to watch your videos. It's going to push your video out to more people. Even if I have a video that has fewer views than I would expect or like to have on the video, especially if it's a video that I worked very, very hard on, if I am getting the engagement in my comments, that to me is a very successful video. And so while I cannot necessarily speak to the views in terms of how they were years ago, I don't have the comparison aspect to that. I can only really talk about my experience and the views I get on some videos versus others. I know what videos are more popular than some of my other ones. I know instantly when I'm filming some of my videos that they're going to get way less interest than some of my other ones. And that's just always been the nature of the beast too. So there's a lot of factors I feel like that go into the views that you're getting or not getting. And I feel like if people just focus on the views that they're getting, it's going to be very, very discouraging. And that's really why I focus on the comments that I'm getting, because that to me is the engagement that I'm looking for. I am super happy when I'm seeing constant comments post up on my videos, because that means that not only are you watching, but you're wanting to engage with me about the content that I'm filming. And that is the whole reason why I'm doing this. And so that's why it's always very, very important when you are commenting on my videos. And I just love and appreciate it so much. All right, everybody, that's it. I feel like this was a very chaotic, random mess of a video. I didn't really necessarily have a plan going into this, but I hope that you found it interesting. And like I said, I would very much love to hear your perspectives down below, especially as somebody who's not really familiar with book talk. I only just know of the discourse that I hear about book talk and some of the videos that I have seen posted on other platforms. So I would love to know what your thoughts are. Do you think booktube is dying? Do you enjoy book talk? Do you think that they can work in harmony together? Let me know all of the things. Or if you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me some type of video emoji, social media emoji down below. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I typically post two videos a week, one on Wednesdays, one on Sundays, and I would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which you can always find linked down below along with any books I featured in the video. Until next time, y'all. Bye.